4K right now. This is crazy. Good morning, siblings. It has been so long since we've just sat and caught up. That's exactly what we're doing today. This is going to be more like podcast style. We're just going to chat, catch up. You guys asked me a bunch of questions on Instagram. I'm going to answer them and just catch you up on my entire life. I literally don't remember the last time I posted a video like this, maybe like two years ago. And we will be spilling some tea. So without further ado, let's catch up. First question, what are your plans for work? Are you gonna focus more on social media like YouTube? Yes, if you guys didn't see my last video, kind of my first week unemployed, um, I got laid off my job last Friday. It has been a whirlwind since. And after some thoughts, prayer, time with God, speaking with my husband, I've decided to pursue full-time social media again. I was a full-time YouTuber from the time I was like 16 to 22 when I got my job. So I'm just gonna give it a go and see how it goes. I wanna have a lot of fun with this channel it be creative and for the first time in my life I feel like I'm so motivated for YouTube I feel like previously it was just like a fun little thing I did I never really took it serious I would just vlog every day of my life and I didn't think twice about it now I want to keep that same energy but add more effort and creativity into it so basically comment down below any video ideas you guys have for me I'm so excited to try this out again and if it doesn't work then I'll try something else in between questions I'll try to throw in some updates as well so a little update for you guys is that I actually got contacts for the first time and my new ones just came in so I can literally see it's crazy but I do love wearing glasses I think they're like an accessory so I got a little home try on kit from a brand called Warby Parker I think I'm gonna get these glasses I think these are like the cutest glasses ever I knew I wanted like a metal frame style so I got a bunch of those to try out which is the sponsor of today's video. I think I'm officially Warby Parker's biggest fan. This is my second time doing a at-home try-on program, but they have everything you need for your eyes, including eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. You can shop with them online or in stores. Their glasses start at just $95, including prescription lenses. With their free home try-on program, you get five pairs of glasses to try on at home for free with no obligation to buy. It ships for free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. I've been able to try a bunch of different glasses and now I know exactly which ones I want and the process is super seamless. In this kit, I tried on the Abe in polished gold, Simon in polished gold, York in polished gold, Wright and Rosemary Crystal, and the Haskell sunglasses and whiskey tortoise. I'm gonna be getting the Simon in polished gold and a lot of the glasses I tried on today were the same style, but they have so many styles on their website. So go check it out. And if you wanna match me, get the Simon ones. I love trying it on at home because then you know exactly how it's gonna look and feel on your own face. Quality is great. I absolutely love this brand. You will be seeing me wear these glasses as soon as I get the actual ones in. And I even got my contact lenses from here. Love that I can get them both in one place. So if you guys want to try five pairs of glasses at home for free, go to warbyparker.com slash sydneyfrancis or click the link in the description. I am going to wear these glasses for the rest of the video so that I can see if I like them or not. Obviously, they aren't my prescription, but I do have my contacts in so I can see. <laughs> of course, I got a ton of questions about marriage, my future, and how marriage is going. So marriage update. I have been married for almost seven months now because surprise me, my husband eloped in J uh, July and didn't tell anyone. I'll make a whole video about like how that went down and why we decided to do that. So our wedding in September was like a celebration and nobody knew we were married except for like our parents. So it really was like a full wedding. We've been married for seven months now here in February. It has been a amazing, life-changing, challenging, but the best seven months of my life. Throughout these seven months, we moved states, we had our big wedding, we bought a house, we remodeled our house, and we were both working full-time. A lot of life things have gone on, and uh, now I got laid off, which has been another challenge. But there's no one I would rather go through life and all of these challenges with than my husband, Abram. He is seriously the best person for me. I feel like we were just like made for each other. Our personalities fit together so well. I don't even know how to explain it. I know people say this all the time, like, oh, it's the best marriage. Ever. It really is. I am so happy. And it goes beyond that. I don't even know how to explain. I just, he is like a man of God. He's my best friend. I feel like we're at such a good, awesome spot in our relationship right now. And I know it will only just like get better as challenges come, like this challenge of being laid off. And I feel like that's all I really 
possibly need to say. The next one, of course, everybody's asking about kids, which is so exciting. And yes, it's a little bit annoying, but I totally get it when like my favorite YouTubers get married. I'm like, I want to know when they want to have kids. Like, every, of course, it's like a fun topic, but it's also a bit personal and invasive. So I'll just give kind of a broad answer that we would be incredibly happy if I was pregnant right now. I'm not, and we're not trying, but we'd be totally fine with it. We both love kids. We want to be young parents. He's 25 and I'm about to turn 23. I have said almost my whole life that I wanted to get pregnant at 24. So I'm just throwing that out there. But at the same time, I don't know what is ahead right now. Obviously, everything kind of seems like unknown waters right now. I don't know if YouTube's going to work out, if I need to get a different job or like what is going to happen. At this point, we're not trying. We are actively avoiding, but we will be so, so happy when the time comes and hopefully it'll be sooner rather than later. The most amount of time that we would wait would probably be like three years, but at the same time, everything is up to God and we're totally trusting God with that aspect of our lives. I also kind of got a lot of questions about our cats. Someone was like, Griffin just appeared. Like what? Okay. So let me just explain. My boyfriend, well, my husband, he was my boyfriend at the time. He wanted an animal so I convinced him to get a Bengal cat. And so he got Phoenix and then we moved in together. So Phoenix was like our cat. And then basically a year after having Phoenix, we were like, he really needs like a buddy. We love Phoenix. We play with him all the time, but you can just, you know, like animals just do so well when there's like another animal around. You saw Griffin and we're like, we have to get him. Like that is perfect. So we just kind of decided to get Griffin. It wasn't anything crazy. We waited about six weeks because he had already been born for a while. We got him at, I think like 17 weeks. He was a little bit older when we got him. It was something like that. I don't know, but we got him and we got him in June of this summer and it's been the best decision ever. Like we love them. They have such different personalities. Phoenix is like so needy and cuddly and always needs attention. Whereas like Griffin literally does his own thing. He doesn't want to be pet. He wants to pet you. So he'll come up and like rub against you. But if you pet him, he'll like run away. He's getting more cuddly though. So I really like that. Um, Griffin will be one like next week and Phoenix will be two in April. So those are our pets. We are not planning on getting any more pets anytime in the future. Why did I originally stop being a full-time YouTuber or just like stop posting as much? So YouTube income is like really difficult. You never know really it like fluctuates so much. That's the hard part about social media, which is why I'm like, I'm just going to try and see what happens. Um, I was also not mentally in a good spot to be putting my entire life on the internet and putting pressure to like have to make money on the things happening in my life. Um, basically, I had wanted to stop doing YouTube at least for a while after my divorce, but um, I didn't have another job. I was looking for a job, but I had no idea what was going on. So it was just kind of like effortlessly making videos, which is not a good way about doing it. So yeah, I just, I was exhausted. I really was. I was tired of putting everything on the internet and then I found my job and it was like the best thing ever. And I worked there for the past year and a half and now I'm in a great place mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And I'm just so excited to share my life on the internet. Have I thought about doing any sort of missions or ministry full time? Don't think God's calling me to anything like that. Um, I have taught Bible studies before at my old church in Texas. I would love to be super involved in my church, but I don't think I'm being called to any like sort of ministry full time. And I definitely am not being called to missions as far as I know right now. And then going along with that, a lot of people have asked if we found a home church. I think so. We've been going there for a couple of months now. We really like it. It's a huge change. Our church in Texas was like the best church. I don't think I can ever find a church as great as that church. Like it really was just everything we needed and more like it was incredible i still watch the sermons and stuff online because i love that church so much and it was a really big church so this church we're going to is definitely smaller um but we love the pastor the way he preaches his sermons they're very biblically based like every sunday we're just in the bible something my husband kept saying is like i want to go to a church where i need to bring my bible so like they're constantly like oh in this verse and this verse and it all ties together so you do need your bible to be flipping through very biblical based and we found one. So we really like it. Um, we joined their like young marrieds class and we like the class too. We haven't gone to like their weekday things yet. So we're going to get into that soon. It was hard to find a church. Let me tell you, we got some high standards when it comes to a church, which you definitely should. And we asked a lot of questions and 
yeah, so, so far, this is our home church, but we'll see what happens. And we do feel like God is, like, calling us to be at this church, so. Update on my house that I first bought when I was 18. So, um, I'm back in my hometown, obviously. I had bought a house here when I was 18. And it was a little three-bedroom, two-bathroom, like, 1,200 square foot, newly remodeled. Absolutely loved that house. When we decided to move back to Missouri, which was definitely, like, God was calling us to move back here, for me to move back and my husband to move here for the first time, I was planning on living in that house. But if you guys didn't see all the updates in the summer, the house got destroyed by my renters. They just decided, oh, maintenance? Yeah, we don't need to tell Sydney about that. So there was like leaking sinks and there was like mice and roaches and fleas and they just didn't tell me anything ever. So when I went to go do an inspection to be like, they were on a month monthly. So I was going to give them, you know, 30 or 60 day notice, maybe even longer. Um, I went to go see the house and it was absolutely disgusting, destroyed. I couldn't even breathe in there. So um, I had to spend a lot of money fixing up the house and ultimately we decided there were too many emotions there. It would never be as good as it was and we wanted something a little bit bigger since we both had full-time incomes. We could totally afford something bigger. Um, the house that we live in now is kind of a whole story of how we got this house but it's one of my friends from high school's grandpa's house and so we got a really good deal on it and was able to remodel it and we used the money that we sold my original house for because I bought that in 2019 so I had gone up a lot with the market. I made a lot of money on it to be honest, which was a huge blessing. And we were able to invest that into this house. So I did sell that house after fixing it up to a nice, lovely couple and very excited for them to live in that house. And it is nice. Like I'm not saying I sold it all crappy. Like we spent a lot of time and money fixing that house up. It is nice. Like I would live in it, but we, a lot of emotions I'd say were in that house. So moving here, much better idea. So going with that, how is living in Missouri back in my hometown? What has it been like? And then I have a little bit of a tea question that a lot of you guys been asking me. So let's talk about moving here first. Um, honestly, I didn't know what to expect. I have a clip on TikTok in my drafts of like October 2022 of me saying, I think God wants me to move back to my hometown. So update me if that happens. Uh, yeah, it happened. So I came to visit and it was like the best vibes ever in 2022. And then I was like praying and God was like, yeah, you're supposed to move there. That's why the vibes were so good. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay. That's like the simplified Sydney version. But yeah, so my husband also was like, I didn't even tell him. And he came and told me that he thinks we're supposed to move to Missouri. So then we're like, oh, okay. So we're definitely supposed to move to Missouri. Um, and his family was moving out of Texas. So there was really no reason to stay there. We wanted to buy a house. My dad's a realtor. We have more connections here. It made sense in like a lot of ways to move here, to be by family, yada, yada. So since we moved back, it's been amazing. Like I love, I have always loved Missouri. I've never had any hate towards Missouri. I think it's a great state. I love my city and I love my family. And I think it was really, really good for me to get space. Like I lived in Texas for two years and I lived in Utah for like almost a year. So I've been away from Missouri for about three years. And those were such formative years of my adulthood from like what, 20 to 23 ish. Um, yeah, amazing. Definitely best decision to move away, kind of grow into my own person, make my own decisions. And now I come back and I have great relationships with like everybody in my family, a lot of growth, a lot of just good times. And Abram loves it here. Actually, he hates the hot weather in Texas. So he's been eating up this winter weather and he loved the summer weather here. It's like not deathly hot. He loves the lake. I love the lake. So overall, it's been great. I genuinely can't think of any complaints other than the fact that I miss my Texas crew so much. I miss my best friend. I miss all the friends I had at my church. I miss the church there. Like, yes, I miss all of that so much. But honestly, moving here has been incredible. And then the tea question I keep getting is, have I seen my ex at all since I've moved here. I do not care to talk about him or the divorce or anything on social media. So this will probably be the last time I even mention anything, but I will say there is no animosity. We have run into each other a couple of times and like at the Halloween party that my cousins and his brother throws and he'll probably be at the Valentine's party that they're throwing together. I don't know. Yeah, we run into each other and we don't really, like we'll kind of be like, hey, like it's no big deal. Like we're completely different people. I'm not going to speak for him at all, but I think I have have grown and forgiven and moved on obviously so it's it's a chill vibe and I'll hang out with like literally last weekend like his brother drove me home from going out with my brother so like there's I, I think that there's no beef, so I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so moving kind of back to Jesus topics, my favorite. I have a lot of questions about like, 
why I didn't post on social media as much about God. How do I not stay stagnant in my relationship? What does my routine with God look like right now? And so just to be completely honest with you guys, 2022, wait, 2023 was definitely a different year for me. Um, I had so much going on in my life that, to be honest, I didn't spend as much time with God, but I found ways to see Him in everything, and I think it really opened my view of God. Obviously, every year I feel like God just gets bigger and bigger in my head, which is amazing, um, and I do feel like I'm still so close with God, but I was kind of lacking in like the reading my Bible every day, but I feel like I saw him in a new light, and I've just recently kind of got back into my daily quiet time, Bible time, which I think is so important, and I don't know why I let go of that. Uh, there was just so much going on in my life, I could give a million excuses, but honestly, my best advice for like not staying stagnant is to just constantly be thinking about God and prioritizing him in your life, whatever that looks like. You know, like it might only be a little bit, you might be, there's scripture that talks about praying always, and I feel like last year was kind of my year of like figuring out what that meant because I was so busy and so stressed and I was constantly like leaning and relying on God. It just looked way different than it had before. But my current like routine with God, I actually just started and I love, let me grab my journal. So I'm doing this like step-by-step -step process, which I don't have to do every day. It could switch, whatever. But right now I've been doing, I start my quiet time with journaling, just talking about my day, um, you know, talking to God, just, just chatting, you know, and then I'll do like a little Bible study. It could be like a whole book of the butt, not a whole book. It could be like a whole chapter or two. It could be a couple of verses. And then I will sit and complete silence with God. This is like the newest thing I've implemented into my relationship with God. And I think if you're a Christian, you should 100,000% be doing this. It is so freaking hard for someone who like has inner like thoughts. Have you guys seen that? Like some people don't have inner thoughts and some people do like you hear out loud in your head. Um, I'm I like, I'm like squirrel. Like I get distracted so easy. This has really been transformative, even just the couple of times that I've been doing it so far. And I'm slowly trying to build up to like longer and longer time, literally complete silence, like darkness. If you you can too. Like a closet would hit for this. Right now I can really only do like five minutes, which is so bad. Like that's how like TikTok brain rot I am, but I'm building up to like a longer and longer time. And then I'll do like a worship song, like sing it, truly worship God through it or a couple, whatever I'm feeling. Then kind of reflect on like what I'm hearing from God and write it down or whatever. And then I'll just end everything with like prayer, just honoring God, telling him, you know, how much I love him and how holy he is and just really soaking up his presence. So that's kind of my routine. And then I've also been working on just that pray always where, you know, Jesus is always at the center of everything I'm doing and thinking. So yeah, why haven't I posted as much about Jesus on social media? Honestly, I don't know. I don't think I realized I wasn't. I wasn't really posting very often. So I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. That's a great question. I will get back to it. <laughs> Here's a fun, simple little question. What is my next hair color? Y'all, I am so committed to the natural hair. I'm just growing out my hair right now. Obviously, this is dyed. I dyed it to be as close to my natural hair as I could. Like, you can kind of see, like, the highlight vibes. I think I look the best as a brunette, and I will be staying a brunette. Plus, dyeing my hair is very expensive because my hair is very thick, and my salon appointments are five hours plus, which is a crime for my wallet, and I don't have a job right now, so. <laughs> Current shows I'm watching. I'm actually not watching any shows. I was watching Madam Secretary. I can't even remember another show other than that that I was watching recently. I haven't watched any like shows or the most recent movie I watched was the Barbie movie. I literally cried at the end and the most recent show was Madam Secretary. I honestly think I'm going to cancel our Netflix membership because I, I don't use it. I just watch YouTube and TikTok if I'm going to watch anything and I've been reading a lot. Oh, speaking of, little update. I am starting a reading channel. I got everything kind of set up in here. I'm still working on it, but I fell in love with reading this year. I'm making a whole video about how I got into reading and why I love reading over on that channel. And then I'm just going to full send on it. Like I just love the fact that I could have this separate channel, just like rant and talk for hours and hours about books. Like I might make a whole book, a whole move, a whole what's it called? A whole video on every single book I read because I, when I read something or watch something, like I'm just, obs I have an obsessive personality. So when I obsess, I obsess, let me tell you. So I've got a lot to say on that channel. So I will link it down below for y'all. <laughs> My new year goals. Okay. I don't know if I'll post the video or not, but I filmed a whole like, let's reset in February because I didn't really do anything in January to like set goals or anything. And then I got let go from my job. So a lot of the goals like don't align with me anymore. So we'll see, or I'll refilm it. But yeah, 
Um, I'll probably make a separate video on that. Do I think I'll ever get a corporate job again? At all costs, I will avoid getting a corporate job again. Like, I think I would rather work somewhere locally than work corporate. I just, I can't. Uh, that could be a whole rant. Okay, and that's pretty much all the questions. So we'll wrap up with this question. What was one thing in marriage that surprised you that you weren't expecting? As someone who is in a godly relationship and we put God first, I wasn't expecting that after we actually got married, everything did change in the best way possible. It was like, I don't even, it's like, it was like a spiritual thing that changed between us. And it was like the best thing ever. But like, I'm so surprised that like when you put God first, marriage is so easy. And, you know, marriage is never easy. Uh, relationships take work. They take um, sacrifice and all that. But putting God first, oh my gosh, like I, the amount of like security and love that I feel I've never felt before. Like the only time I've ever felt so secure, so loved is in my relationship with God. And since I've gotten married, my husband has made me feel that exact same way. Like he has really reflected Jesus's love in our marriage. And I will be so grateful for that for the rest of my life. But I did not expect to just feel so like secure and cozy. I don't know how to explain it. It's the best thing ever. I love being married to my husband. We'll just say that. <laughs> Y'all, I can't believe I turned 23 in like a week. I feel like I'm getting old, but I know that's still like so young. Um, anyway, thank you guys for catching up with me. This was so much fun. I have not sat and talked to the camera in so long. I'm loving it. And thank you again to Warby Parker for sponsoring this video. Go check them out with the link below because these glasses are so slay. I'm definitely going to get these. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.